And we're back at 440. The San Antonio Spurs taking on the Trailblazers last night. Spurs also hoping a win can help them catch up to the Pelicans in the race for that play-in tournament on this road trip. Spurs stumble a bit out of the gate, down 9-2, but then they take off in a sprint. Devin Vassell with a three from the wing puts the Spurs up 12-9. Spurs really have, uh, don't really have any trouble after that. DeJounte Murray at 28 on the night before sitting in the final quarter. Keldon Johnson added 26. It helps Spurs knock off Portland 133 to 96. Very nice. Uh, Murray was 7 of 7 from the floor and led all scores with 20 first half points. He finished with 7 of the Spurs 34 assists. Spurs still in the mix for the playing game in the Western Conference with three wins in their last five games. They finished with 19 threes matching their season high and just one shy of franchise record. San Antonio was without Lonnie Walker for a second straight game, game because of back spasms. UTSA Roadrunners held Pro Day on campus yesterday to showcase 15 of their student athletes to NFL scouts and general managers and get this 30 of the 32 NFL teams were represented, including the Cowboys and the Texans and form of uh, general manager Nick Casario. This is a chance for players who were not invited to the NFL Combine, like Spencer Burford, Sincere McCormick, and Tariq Woolen. They were able to get a chance to show off their skills. I'm just glad they like, get the exposure at the end of the day. Having all 32 NFL teams here it just gives everyone a fair shot, gives everybody a fair chance just to be put in front of these teams. You know, sometimes guys may have not been invited somewhere. They, some did, some didn't. Some scouts probably don't have you on their radar at all. You know, they'll be like, hold on, who is that? You know what I'm saying? Then they look at, you know, my film, be like, oh, it matches his film. You know, and like, I just feel like that's going to, you know, better me. It was always a blessing and then just coming here today and showcase that I improved from senior bowl to combine to now, you know, it was just a great feeling. So I feel great with what I did today. Meanwhile, the UTSA Roadrunners Fiesta Spring Game will be held April 14th, 7 p.m. at Dub Ferris Stadium. And time now is 442 and 44 degrees for now. Coming up next, why Prince William and Kate Milton are getting backlash following an eight-day trip to the Caribbean. And welcome back. It's 445. Prince William and Kate Middleton are encountering backlash and protests during their eight day royal tour of Caribbean nations. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Royal Reckoning, Prince William speaking out, acknowledging the monarch's historic role in colonialism, racism, and the slave trade, saying, I want to express my profound sorrow. Slavery was abhorrent, and it should never have happened. Facing backlash and protests, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are on a royal tour of the Caribbean, but are now being pushed to answer for the sins of the old British Empire. During a welcome for the two Wednesday morning, Jamaica's Prime Minister had this message to the palace. We are moving on. Presenting the couple an official gift of aged rum, all smiles during the meet and greet, but the Prime Minister not shying away from saying it's Jamaica's destiny to become an independent country. There are issues here which are, as you would know, unresolved. So what does this mean for the rest of the Royal Caribbean tour? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 446 preserving family memories. We're talking about that box of old family photos and memorabilia that may be in the back of the closet or up in the attic. Here's 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with how to make sure they last. David Morgan started preserving his family photos a few years ago. It really kind of started when my dad passed, um, just because we were trying to get his obituary together. Now I'm uh, trying to really organize things by year, by name. Just getting started can feel overwhelming. Start with what you think is most important. Find the photos and the documents that are really going to mean something to you and to other people years from now. He suggests labeling everything lightly with a soft pencil. Add details to the back edges of photos, including names, dates, locations. You might also want to interview the oldest person in your family to fill in the blanks and get backstories. Next, restore faded photos. David used Photoshop on his parents' 1960 prom picture. I just really like that photo because my mom uh, was really proud of that dress. You can also help future-proof your photos. 
use acid-free materials when you're storing your photos and documents. This will really help them from degrading over time. You should protect your memorabilia from bright or direct light. Keep them in comfortable temperatures and avoid humidity. Don't store them in the attic. You can keep photos clean by using a soft brush or lint-free cloth. You can also make digital copies from the originals using a scanner or even your smartphone. Then store those files in a few safe places, your computer, an external hard drive, and the cloud. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Time check 448. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos about the problems on 35. It's a good morning to stay alert. Uh, I mean, any morning really is. But when we see these flashing lights, uh, they tend to attract drivers and distract them. But if you are just waking up right now, you may notice that you're seeing some of these vehicles that are moving slowly off 410 at FM 78. Uh, that's because a crash has been reported in that area that is causing this slowdown. And right now, vehicles, drivers, again, make sure that you are paying attention because you're going to have to exit here off 410 northbound. It's at, at exit Space Center Drive. Pardon me. There is a closure here in those northbound lanes of 410, and that is due to a crash that happened right here off I-35 northbound at Riddiman Road. So again, right now traffic is being forced to exit that Space Center Drive, but first responders have been out there for a little while now. We are working to get some information, nothing confirmed just yet. Not sure how many vehicles were involved or if there were any injuries, but we are working to confirm that. Katrina Weber will be live with us a little bit later this morning, but right now this is an area, if you can, try to avoid it. We're starting to see a slight slowdown in that direction, but we'll be giving you those updates, so stay with us coming up in a little bit later on in the newscast, guys. You know, it's weird, Stephen. I know you were under the weather earlier yeah. this week. We had a problem in that same area for Mike was mentioning that. many, many hours. Yeah, a little bit earlier this mm -hmm. week. Yes, it was, it's been busy on the roadways. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. It really has. All right, Mike's back, and it was really chilly yesterday morning. How are yeah. we looking out there right now? Really chilly. Yeah, <laughs> it's cold out there. Temperatures are a good uh, 10, in some cases close to 15 degrees below normal, and then we're going to be up closer to normal, unlike the past couple of days. So yesterday, it looks like this one was taken before the high layer of clouds kind of moved on in here, and it, says, it almost looks like radio waves kind of emanating from that radio tower there, that TV tower. Cool picture, though, or is that a cell phone tower? Something like that. Anyway, thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect shot. And a uh, good-looking view of the skyline. We don't have any uh, any issues out there. A couple of clouds, that's about it. And then we'll have plenty of sunshine throughout the day. Wind chill temperatures right now, 38 Randolph, 39 in town, and 38 also in Balverde. Need, oh, it feels like freezing in Hondo, by the way. So needless to say, grab a, a jacket. And throughout the rest of today, temperatures are just going to continue to uh, drop down a couple of more degrees here and there. And we're going to have plenty of uh, sunshine and clear skies. We will, of course, begin our warming process once we get into the mid-morning hours and the sun comes up. So temperatures will be drop, jumping up a good 5, 6 degrees per hour. So we'll be right around 50 at 9 o'clock, 60, 11 o'clock, mid-60s by noon, and then continue up into the mid-70s. So we will be anywhere from about uh, three, four, five degrees above what it was yesterday. That's roughly a normal high temperature, which you'd expect this time of year. But notice how it is going to remain on the breezy side. So that combined, of course, with the very, very low humidity is what's prompting the red flag warnings to go into effect 11 o'clock till 7 o'clock tonight for virtually all of the area, with the exception of some of our eastern counties where you had some of the rain, but uh, just about within. And even though there's nothing formally posted here, you just got to watch any sort of outdoor burning and this is going to be a situation where there's nothing formally issued for tomorrow but still fire danger is going to be on the the critical side just because these numbers the dew points the measure of moisture in the atmosphere are going to remain very very low and you get any sort of breeze it won't be quite as breezy but still a very high fire danger this is going to be the case again into tomorrow then we go into saturday and notice how this start of the humidity humidity return uh, will commence over the weekend. Doesn't mean it's going to be oppressively humid at all, but it's going to begin to return. Then it'll come back in next week. So we had uh, some very dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, and this means we're going to have some beautiful blue skies today and uh, nothing going on as far as computer models all the way through the weekend. Just a lot of sunshine around here. So yes, beautiful weather. Downside, of course, we do have those red flag warnings today. 65 degrees at noon, sunny and windy. And then a high temperature today up to 75, again, sunny and windy. Then we go into the next few days. Tomorrow, we jump up into the mid-80s. Same thing on Saturday. And it's still going to be cold the next couple of mornings. Then the humidity begins its return later in the weekend and the first part of next week, which is evident by those low temperatures. A couple of showers are going to be possible 
Tuesday and Wednesday. Jury's still out as to how much how widespread the rain, but at least there's that chance of rain by next week. Hey, Mike, it's not even 5 a.m. You're allowed to say humidity or whatever <laughs> that was. I promise you're okay. Yeah, nobody's going to get mad. <laughs> and then also trying to type it in, too. It's like, how many eyes are supposed to be in there? Right, yes. It's we, early. We, it is past. very early. But we're glad you're up with us uh, this early. 452 now, 45 degrees. And coming up next, the red carpet is being rolled out for the Academy Awards. We're going to tell you which films are expected to get high praise. The red carpet is ready for the Oscars, plus it's a big week for actress Jessica Chastain. Fill it is on what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. They've officially rolled out the red carpet in Hollywood, literally ahead of Sunday night's Oscars. The show making its return to the Dolby Theater after being held last year at Union Station in downtown Los Angeles due to the pandemic. This year, there will be fewer media outlets than usual on the carpet and backstage, but far more than last year's super limited show. And you'll see it all Sunday night on ABC. There are plenty of pretty voices with nothing to say. Do you have something to say? And speaking of the Oscars, Best Picture frontrunner Coda is going from the screen to the stage. The story about a teenage daughter with a dream to sing, trying to find her place among her mostly deaf family, is being adapted into a musical by the L.A.-based Deaf West Theater. It was a new experience this week for the cast and creators of Bridgerton, a premiere for season two. They didn't get to do that ahead of season one because of the pandemic, and executive producer Shonda Rhimes says the gathering this week in London was fantastic and long overdue. It's so exciting to be here celebrating the show because we didn't get to do it the first time around and to really be able to come together after all this time. I think this is the first time we really had a chance to just join together and enjoy this, it's something that's not over Zoom. And it's a big week for Jessica Chastain, nominated for Best Actress at Sunday's Oscars, and today's her birthday. She's 45. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 457 and 45 degrees out there for now. Still ahead on GMSA after three days of hearings. What's next in the Supreme Court confirmation process for Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson? Plus, YouTube is making thousands of TV show episodes free to stream. We're going to tell you how to find them coming up in Tech Bites. And we are going to lead our newscast yet again in this next half hour with an update on the situation with all these flashing lights out there on the northeast side, the vicinity of Loop 410 and FM 78. Stephen has more coming up, and I think we're just about ready to check in live with Katrina Weber. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, what's next for Judge Katanji Brown Jackson following 19 hours of questioning at the Senate Judiciary Committee. Now the cold start out there, he, even here in town, mid 40s. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, the 24th. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're going to check in with Mike in just a minute, but first let's go over to Stephen Cavazos. There's been a lot of problems there on I-35. Another busy morning, Mark. Stephanie, we're taking a look at 410 at FM 78. If you're just waking up with us, uh, you may want to avoid this area if it's in during uh, a route you take during your morning drive. 410 at FM 78, we see some flashing lights. What we're also spotting from this view is some slow moving traffic there. You can see that we do have first responders uh, that are actually forcing vehicles to take that exit, and that's because that portion there has been closed off according to text stop. What we're looking at here on the map now is 410 northbound. Right now, vehicles are taking that exit at Space Center Drive, and we're seeing that slight buildup. It's nothing too bad just yet, but the morning is still young, and as we see more people get out and that crash is still there, we can likely start to see a buildup in that direction. So watch out. But again, that is because of that crash that they're investigating right here off I-35 northbound at Ritterman Road. We're not seeing a big buildup yet, and we're not sure what caused it. We're going to speak to Katrina Weber in just a moment. Moment, but let's get that bird's eye view of the metro area. Not seeing slowdowns anywhere else. There's not really anything else to report in terms of crashes or stalls, but the big problem is going to be right here off of 410 at FM 78. And once again, we do have Katrina Weber, who is live there this morning. Katrina, what are the conditions looking like right now? Well, Stephen, these roads are busy, especially this access road. This is all the traffic that is being forced off the highway. Now, this is that area where 410 and 35 meet up, and you can see all of the flashing lights back here. From what we have been told by police, uh, there was a car that came off I-35, came right off the highway uh, to the ground below, and that car then broke into pieces. 
We have visual confirmation that the medical examiner is here. I also spoke with them on the phone, and they did confirm that they were called here for a death investigation. Uh, we don't know exactly how many people, whether it's just a driver or if there was a passenger. Police uh, would not release that information, but we do know that there is a death involved. A car, again, that came off that elevated highway and crashed on the ground below. In the meantime, all of that traffic uh, is being forced off of I-35 at the Riddiman exit, and that's what you see here on this access road. Uh, and this will be the situation probably for the foreseeable future, at least until police are finished with this investigation. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Of course, we'll keep you updated all morning long with that situation. All right, grab a coat before you head out the door this morning. Temperatures are anywhere from 10 to about 15 degrees below normal. We are at 42 right now, and notice the bottom number right there is at 24. That's the dew point. That's the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. So we've got that bone dry air, which cools down very easily and then heats up very, very quickly. It doesn't take a whole lot of energy, as much energy as it does with moist air. And so that's why we get these big swings in temperatures. We do have somewhat of a breeze right now. Now, temperature is going to continue a nice upward climb throughout the day. We will end up gaining uh, when it's all said and done about 35 degrees thanks to that dry air. But then, of course, there is somewhat of a, a downside to that dry air. We're going to talk about that in a second. The aquifer dropped down six uh, tenths of a foot on yesterday's reading and the allergens. Everything is still on the low side, including oak, although, you know, that season is just uh, right around the corner. All right, with temperatures now uh, in the 40s and even mid 30s, then you add in that slight breeze and we do have a wind chill to deal with. Feels like 30 right now at Hondo, 37 out at the airport, and the wind chill is 38 in Balverde. So with dry air, windy conditions, winds pick up later on today. Of course, we do have the red flag warnings that go into effect for virtually all of the area, with the exception of about the uh, northeastern quarter of our viewing area from 11 until 7 o'clock. An extremely high fire danger, and of course, with virtually parched ground out there and virtually no rain at all in our western counties for as long as uh, you can remember basically high fire danger today and also fire danger is going to be on the critical side tomorrow just because we'll still have that very dry air in place maybe not quite as windy however a couple of clouds one or two of them out there very chilly this morning and then sunny windy mid 70s later on today good looking day and sunny it'll be breezy tomorrow uh, not as windy mid 80s so we are going to be very warm tomorrow really warming up and that's going to stay that way over the weekend humidity will begin its return, especially later on in the weekend. So that's going to help out, obviously, with the fire danger. And then next week, we do have a chance for a couple of showers. Not a great shot right now, but at least there's that chance. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. New this morning, some people in East Bear County arrived home late last night to find their vehicle and their trailer home had burned down. Look at this video. Happened around 10 last night at the Windmill Heights RV Park at FM 3465 out in Atkins. Fire crews say when they got there, both the vehicle and trailer were on fire. They're both considered a total loss. No injuries reported. The owner says they were visiting San Antonio at the time of the fire. This morning, a San Antonio couple facing charges after Bear County deputies stopped what they say looked like the start to a human smuggling operation. Now, Lydia and Alejandro Juarez are each facing eight counts of theft of a vehicle. Deputies found trucks worth more than $400,000 at their property off Silver Trail, along with 11 undocumented immigrants in a shed. Now, according to the arrest affidavit, the trucks did not have bench seats. That's something investigators often see when trucks are used for human smuggling. Their bonds are set at 40 grand each. A leadership struggle between the South Sand Independent School District Board of trustees continues during the first meeting since December of last year. All, last night, all since December rather, last night all trustees were present for the first time in months. After a heated discussion, the board the majority voted to reassess the board roles of president, vice president, secretary after only three months. The district superintendent is still on administrative leave. In the meantime, an interim superintendent is trying to keep the district staff moving forward with day to day operations. You can read more about the district's troubled past on KSAT.com. We are learning more about the tornado that left significant damage throughout Guadalupe County on Monday. The National Weather Service now confirms it was an EF2 tornado. 
Estimated peak winds were at about 115 miles per hour. The tornado traveled more than seven miles, passing through Kingsbury and Luling, just west of Seguin. Several trees were snapped and even uprooted. And according to Guadalupe County officials, at least 24 properties were damaged. No injuries were reported. A local state of disaster has been issued for that area for at least the next six days. And turning to Washington, a vote on Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson's nomination to the Supreme Court is expected before the Senate's Easter break. It follows days of hearings which continued into last night. ABC's Alex Perche has the highlights. This morning, Democrats are blasting some Republicans for the questions they raised during the marathon confirmation hearings for Supreme Court nominee Ketanji Brown Jackson. Ignored the rules of the committee badgered the nominee. I've never seen anything like that. I've been here 48 years. Republican senators accused Jackson of being soft on sex offenders in child porn cases when she was a district judge. Despite fact checkers finding that the terms Jackson handed down were within the norms of federal guidelines. I've taken every case seriously. These are do you have Very to say about the horrible I'm asking you specifically crimes. about and Senator Lindsey Graham interrupting Jackson repeatedly on the issue. Senator, this crime is among the most difficult. No, answer most. my question. Jackson also sparring with Republican Senator Stay John Cornyn on abortion. So there's no suggestion that after 20 weeks that a child can be live independently, correct? Senator, I'm I'm not a biologist. I haven't studied this. I don't know. Then Democratic Senator Cory Booker speaking in support of Jackson, emphasizing the historic nature of her nomination. You got here how every black woman in America who's gotten anywhere has done by being <laughs> like Ginger Rogers said. I did everything Fred Astaire did, but backwards in heels. I know what it's taken for you to sit in that seat. And Senator Ben Sass appearing to subtly call out his Republican colleagues. I think we should recognize that the jackassery we often see around here um, is partly because of people mugging for short term uh, camera opportunities. If Democrats stay united and it's expected that they will, they won't need a single Republican vote to confirm her. A vote on her nomination is expected early next month. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Just about 10 minutes past the hour, 44 degrees. And coming up next, how the city and the San Antonio Housing Authority are trying to help families despite an end to an eviction moratorium. And outside with live cam, yes, grab a jacket. But how warm will it get later on? Oh, look at this beautiful shot. We zoomed in a little bit more. And we've captured some of the tallest buildings in downtown San Antonio. That's gorgeous, isn't it? It looks beautiful with all the lights there. We'll be right back. The city and San Antonio Housing Authority are continuing to help families despite an end to the eviction moratorium last month. Saha has not started any evictions since the moratorium ended on February 28th. Meanwhile, the city is still processing 6,500 last-minute emergency housing assistance program applications. Since the EHAP opened, almost $200 million in assistance has been awarded. On top of continued work with the city, Saha met with CPS Energy to begin utility assistance. Whatever we can do to help them get caught up, we're going to do it for our families. Keeping people housed is a, is a top priority. We know that the most affordable housing out there is the home that you're already in. In April, Garcia says the city will open the housing assistance program. It's a rebranding of their risk mitigation fund and will be open to families who are needing financial assistance in a broad sense. 514, now down to 43 degrees. And still ahead, while you soon will not be able to buy movies and TV shows from the Google Play app. And we'll tell you how you can watch more than 4,000 TV show episodes for free on YouTube. I assumed that's the we stayed put. Turns out it can be on the move. We were breathing that day and night. That's when we started using Swiffer. In just a few minutes, Duster captures dust before it gets airborne. It traps and locks dust in one swipe. Yes. For our floors, Sweeper's heavy duty cloths easily trap dust, dirt, and hair, locking it in. See you, dust. And Swiffer partners with the American Lung Association to support clean air. Would you like to try a breakfast sausage made with plants? Plants? It's delicious. And I'm a kid, so if I like it... Mm. Morningstar Farms, America's favorites made from plants. And trying Cognito. 
You'd think the sax player would be getting ready for his solo, but no, he's currently checking his investments. You gotta have a plan outside the band, man. Digital tools so impressive, you just can't stop. What would you like the power to do? In today's Tech Bytes, some big additions to Apple's wallet. Arizona is the first state to roll out Apple's digital driver's license and state ID. Residents can add them to their Apple wallets right from the wallet app. Several other states will offer the feature soon. Google says it will stop selling movies and TV shows from the Google Play app starting in May. Instead, users can make those purchases from the Google TV app. Books and other apps will still be available at Google Play. And YouTube is rolling out more free TV options. The site has made 4,000 television episodes available for streaming at no cost. Ad-supported programs include Hell's Kitchen and Unsolved Mysteries. The offering puts YouTube in competition with other services such as Peacock and Roku. By the way, a ABC News Live is always free. Just saying. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. It's now 518. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Hey, good morning, Mark. Stephanie, we are keeping a very close eye on a few incidents that are happening on the roadway. 35 at upper level Brooklyn, 35 here at Space Center is the main problem. Uh, we're going to take a quick look around town and get to a look at how things have been looking on Transguide in just a moment. But we really want to talk about what's happening here in this particular spot at town. Uh, Katrina Weber has been live there this morning. She mentioned that there is a deadly crash that happened out there earlier this morning. We know that it is causing some issues for drivers at this hour. And of course, she's going to bring us more information as the morning does go on, but as we are seeing the minutes go by, we are starting to see this buildup right here happening on the northbound lanes of 410. Drivers, again, as a reminder, TxDOT is urging you to take that exit here at Space Center Drive as first responders are working to clear that scene up. It's unclear how long this will take, but of course, we are seeing that slight buildup there in those northbound lanes of 410, so watch out there. Uh, but you know, while we have this time right now, we're going to take a look at these inbound times. No delays coming in from Seguin to downtown San Antonio. 21 minutes if you're coming in from 87 and Lavernia and 28 minutes right now if you're driving in from Floresville. So we're not worried about that, but we are going to keep our eye on things. Thankfully, elsewhere around the city looks like things are moving just fine. Guys, thanks for the update, Stephen. Thank you. And another beautiful picture there. Yep. Some spring flowers and tracking all the beautiful butterflies out there. Um, we don't really, if you want to plant anything, you're going to have to water it yourself because we don't have anything uh, in the offing as far as any rain until at least a week from now, basically, or six days from now, middle of middle part of next week. And with everything so dry out there, the fire danger is very, very high. So just be careful. Beautiful view of uh, the skyline there, the plane flying over right above the Tower of the Americas. Throughout the rest of the morning, we'll drop down a few more degrees. We're in the uh, 40s and 30s right now, and a couple of clouds hanging around, but mostly clear skies. The moon was absolutely gorgeous. Just about a the uh, it's the waning uh, waning gibbous moon just looks like it's kind of sliced in half out there. It's beautiful this morning and then we'll be up to 50 by 9 o'clock 60 at 11 and again plenty of sunshine with this dry air. We're going to warm up very quickly 5 6 7 degrees per hour and then we top off at 75 later on today and of course with the breezy conditions with the dry air that's what's prompting the red flag warning being effect for just about all of the area with the exception of some of our eastern counties fire danger remains very high and even though nothing is formally posted for tomorrow, it's also going to remain on the, the critical side. Very parched ground, dry air, and still enough of a breeze out there. 72 yesterday, 73 in Pleasanton, and 75 down around Catula, and then definitely add to that, especially off to the west, we're going to be up into the low to mid 80s, but in around the metropolitan area, we're looking at mid and a couple of uh, upperish 70s here. Leon Springs is going to be up to 77 later on today, and then add to that the next couple of days. So we're going to be staying in the low to mid 80s all the way through the middle part of next week and then sort of divide this graphic in half much more comfortable in the left half of it and then more humidity in the right half of it. So that's obviously going to be though helping out the fire danger though with to get more humidity and then look at the low temperatures when they stay in the upper 50s, low 60s. This indicates some more humidity around here going into the uh, first and middle part of next week. So up until then today, tomorrow, uh, Saturday, most of Sunday is going to be comfortable as far as the humidity is concerned. It's 65 degrees today at noon, sunny and windy and and a high temperature is going to make it all the way up to 75. And again, that breeze out there with the red flag warnings throughout most of the area. Tomorrow, another chilly morning down to 43. 
48 on Saturday and temperatures go up into the 80s going into the weekend. Yeah, beautiful, pleasant, cool in the morning and we still have those roughly 30, 35 degree swings in temperatures all the way through Sunday. That uh, kind of changes by the first of next week. Hopefully some rain by Wednesday. This is perfect blue bonnet weather. Nice chilly mornings, lots of sunshine in the afternoons. We should see a good crop this year. Hopefully hope, hope if there's been enough rain, I right? Mean, yeah, a lot of folks just you know, I've seen more and more just in the last week. Yeah, nice days for pictures. Yeah. Well, Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Mike. Right now, 523, 43 degrees. Popular singer's flight makes an emergency landing, plus Coda heads to the live stage. That's next in your morning spotlight. 525, Miley Cyrus faces an emergency plane landing, and Coda moves to the live stage. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Miley Cyrus experiences a sky-high scare. The singer's flight to Paraguay had to make an emergency landing Wednesday. Cyrus posted a message on her Instagram account stating that the plane had been struck by lightning and assuring fans that everyone made it on the ground safely. Coda will take its singing to the live stage. The Oscar-nominated drama is reportedly being adapted into a stage musical by the Deaf West Theatre. No timeline has been given for the project, which is being developed by the film's producers. Taron Egerton has tested positive for COVID-19 and is taking a week-long break from his latest West End play. The show's producers posted the news on social media, saying the actor will spend the next week isolating. The news comes two weeks after Egerton passed out and collapsed to the stage on opening night of the production. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 526, heads up, it's 43 degrees outside. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you which major airlines are asking the Biden administration to end COVID-19 mask and test requirements. And we have important information on a new recall that involves thousands of Ford vehicles. Plus why it may be a little harder for you to find your favorite refrigerated pizzas like Totino's at the grocery store. Making news this hour, why several major airlines are pushing the Biden administration to end COVID-19 mask requirements for flights and in airports. And taking a look outside with live cam, grab a jacket. It's 43 degrees right now, but things will warm up later this afternoon. Good morning. It's Thursday, the 24th. Thanks for joining us today. Looking forward to another beautiful day, but we'll talk with Mike in just a minute. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos first. Yes, the latest on a fatality accident. Yeah, not so pretty out on the roadways here off of 410 at FM 78. We are taking a look at those flashing lights. Those are first responders investigating that deadly crash that happened a little bit earlier this morning. Katrina Weber is live there and we're going to speak to her in just a moment, but let's see how this is impacting that morning commute. Uh, as you can see from this shot, it trans guides slow moving traffic that is forced to exit there 410 near 35 where those two interchanges meet. So make sure that you are driving carefully. And if you need to head this route and maybe have to head to work and rush there, this is not a place you're going to want to be right now because you could be stuck in some traffic. We get that overall view of the map and we're not seeing congestion anywhere else. But where we're starting to see that buildup is there at 410 northbound. That crash again picked up here of the northbound lanes of 35 near Ritterman. But further down, TxDOT actually has the 410 northbound lanes closed off and they're actually asking traffic to exit the Space Center Drive. So you see that buildup of red and and orange that's continued to build over the last few minutes. We're watching it closely, but as we inch closer and closer to 6 a.m., this could start to gradually pick up as well as vehicles get and drivers get their morning started. But again, we're going to watch it closely. Katrina Weber again live there right now. Katrina, tell us where you are and what you've been able to find out. Well, we're right on this access road just south of Ritterman Road. This is the area where that car came off the elevated highway and landed on the ground below. Take a look at all these lights that are out here, all these first responders still working the scene. And you can see that the traffic here on the access road has picked up since the last time uh, we visited. Now this goes back to about three o'clock this morning. Police told us that there was a driver on I-35 just south of Ridman Road who for some reason came off the highway. Now the curious thing is police say there's no damage to any of the railing on the highway. Somehow that car went clear over the side and landed in pieces according to police on the ground below. Now we do have the medical examiner here. Uh, we have confirmed that there is at least one person who was killed in this crash. And so the investigation is continuing right now in this area. Uh, and again, traffic being forced off, I guess, 410 and 35 
uh, in this area near Riedemann Road as you head north on those highways. Uh, you're being asked to get off and use the access road to get around this area. We'll keep you updated and let you know as soon as that changes. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. All right, step outside this morning, and as you notice, Katrina has got a uh, pretty heavy coat on because it's cold out there. Grab your sunglasses and grab your jacket. And it's one of those days where we're going to be gaining about 35 degrees on average, in some cases even more than that, from the low to the high. 42 right now, and then the dew point temperature. Measure moisture in the atmosphere down to 24. So really, really dry air out there. A slight breeze out of the uh, northwest, and so that gives us a wind chill right now. Feels like uh, 30. 37 here in town and the wind chills 42 at Randolph 30. That's the cold spot over there for you folks in Hondo and right around Rio Medina feels like 40 degrees. We do have the red flag warnings that go into effect later on this afternoon because of this very dry air. The wind is going to be picking up later on today. We're going to have 10 20 mile per hour winds and then gusting on top of that close to about 30 miles per hour at least in some cases. So outdoor burning, just forget about it altogether because anything that pops up is going to spread extremely quickly if any fires do pop up. All the allergens got a bunch of them out there, but everything is on the low side, including oak. Even though all the leaves started to fall, still don't have a lot of oak pollen hanging around here, and that's fine with me. 65 degrees today at noon, 75 for a high temperature today. Again, some blustery winds, and then it's going to cool off fairly quickly later on this evening. So if you're going to be out from this afternoon into the evening hours, make sure you do take a jacket with you. Another uh, day tomorrow, just about like today, except add roughly anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees to the high temperature. Weekend forecast is coming up in a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. You could soon be flying without a mask if a group of airlines has its way. CNN's Amy Kiley has more on the company's request to the Biden administration. These 10 U.S. airlines and cargo carriers have a request for the Biden administration. They want to get rid of mask mandates on flights and test requirements for international travel. Some European countries are starting to do that, but not everyone thinks it's a good idea. Those countries are lifting the restrictions brutally from too much to too few. The federal transportation mask mandate ends April 18th, barring another extension. The White House says it's consulting the CDC about lifting it earlier. That agency reports cases are trending down. It's also warning the new Omicron subvariant is more transmissible than the original version. Our vaccines work, our boosters work, and it does not indicate more severe disease than the original Omicron. It's still unclear who might need another booster. Some people have been clear they don't want to wear a mask. Look around you. This is the power. We, the people, have the power. If the Biden administration does lift the COVID-19 transportation mandates now, they can always reimpose them later. We look at hospitalizations for COVID-19. We look at hospital capacity. And importantly, we also look at cases. So all of those go into the formulation as we um, use those metrics for future guidance. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Ladies. The Biden administration rolling back some Trump era tariffs and a move supported by American businesses with President Biden in Europe. A new trade agreement with the United Kingdom is lifting tariffs on British steel and aluminum. In exchange, the Brits will lift retaliatory tariffs on American exports, including whiskey, motorcycles and agricultural products. In a separate policy exchange, the administration also easing some tariffs on Chinese made goods put in place by President Trump. Sarah Palin continues to push back. The former VP candidate and Alaska governor wants a new defamation trial against the New York Times. Now, Palin's attorneys accuse the U.S. District Judge of having a slanted view of the case. Palin sued the Times and its former editorial page editor back in 2017. In February, the jury found the New York Times wasn't liable for publishing an editorial that incorrectly linked a map that Palin's political action committee posted to the 2011 shooting that killed six and injured former Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. The judge explained the jury's decision, saying there wasn't clear and convincing evidence that the Times knew the statements were probably false. Palin's attorneys asked the court to vacate the jury's verdict. 
NASA is looking for another company to help in its return to the moon. The space agency has opened up a competition through a proposal process to develop lunar lander concepts. SpaceX has already contracted to help NASA with its Artemis program. Now NASA is looking for a second company. The plan is for the U.S. to conduct long-term lunar exploration through several Artemis missions. NASA also wants SpaceX and other companies to develop landers for lunar missions beyond the Artemis missions. Time now, 537 and a chilly 43 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA this morning, thousands of Ford vehicles are included in a new recall. We'll tell you about the problem and how it can get fixed. Also next, as more children are affected by the violence in Ukraine, how the U.S. is officially condemning Russia's actions. Back outside with live cam, we started out around 45 when we came on the air this morning, down a couple of degrees already. Grab that coat. We're not quite done with the chilly weather here in South Texas. We'll talk to Mike coming up. 540, the historic humanitarian crisis in Ukraine is getting worse as Russian forces continue attacks on civilian targets. And as CNN's Cole Higgins reports, the United States is officially labeling those acts as war crimes. The United States government now formally accusing Russian forces of committing war crimes in Ukraine. There have been numerous credible reports of hospitals, schools, um, theaters, etc. being intentionally attacked. The United Nations and other credible observers have confirmed hundreds of civilian deaths, and we believe that the, exa the exact civilian death toll will be in the thousands. Dozens of attacks on Ukrainian health care facilities have been confirmed by the World Health Organization. We are in the process of verifying further attacks. In Mariupol, the city, the United Nations humanitarian chief has labeled the center of hell in Ukraine. New aerial images reveal widespread destruction from relentless Russian attacks. We have reached maybe for once uh, in my lifetime an appropriate level, level of horror of what's happening in Ukraine and particularly what's happening in Mariupol. <laughs> Amidst the destruction of a once peaceful neighborhood in Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, where more than 1,100 buildings have been destroyed, a cellist plane rings through the ruins in hopes to raise awareness and funds to help restore his city. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. 542, 43 degrees. And coming up next, the San Antonio Humane Society standing by with a furry pet that needs a new home this morning. Well, if this isn't a perfect example of being spoiled, he's got a shirt on and then wrapped up in a towel and being held. <laughs> exactly. Kim's here from San Antonio Humane so Society. So chilly. Who's this little one? This is Porky. Uh, Porky yeah. is, I know. Porky's like, I'm just nice and snug. Porky is a three month old uh, terrier mix. Uh, Porky came into us just a, a couple of days ago. And Porky has, there's brothers and sisters, two others that look just like him. So. You do have a little bit of white in your chest right there. So. I know. Okay. Say hi, Can't see it underneath that nice little snuggly t-shirt got in there. So. It's and, nice and cozy. And for being three months old, well, probably just because he's wrapped up nice and snug, no. but he's the calmest little three-month-old, too. Yeah, but he'll definitely want to play. Yeah. So lots and lots of fun outside, keeping him busy. Um, and lots of chew toys inside. Lots so of chew toys, so he doesn't choose. Exactly. That's happened to me before. <laughs> What's going on? So Fiesta's coming up, right? Right mm -hmm. around the corner. Um, we've got our great Fiesta medals on sale. We also will have Fiesta t-shirts on sale at our location um, off of Fredericksburg Road. So come and see us. Get fiesta -fied. Get Fiesta! It's early this year, but you got to get in the spirit. So exactly! And adopt little Porky or some of the other kitties yeah. and puppies they have over there. And the address is 4804 Fredericksburg Road, just outside Loop 410. 226-7461 is the number to call. Thank you, dear. Thank you. And in your morning consumer headlines, Ford has issued a recall for some of its trucks and SUVs because of a brake fluid leak. Now, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, close to 200,000 vehicles could potentially be affected. They include F-150s from 2016 to 2018, Expeditions from 2016 to 2017, and Lincoln Navigators from 2016 to 2017. 
Ford says a loss of brake fluid could reduce brake pedal function and require greater effort and distance to stop. At least four low-speed accidents have occurred because of that issue. No injuries have been reported. If your car is impacted, dealers will replace the brake master cylinder free of charge. You may have a tough time finding your favorite frozen pizza. General Mills says they're struggling to meet demand for its refrigerated pizzas like Totino's, along with raw dough for its Pillsbury line. The company's chief financial officer blames, altogether now, supply chain shortages, pointing to disruptions in supply of raw materials to make their food like fats, oils, starch, and even packaging. The company also said the costs of products like wheat are rising because of inflation. Even though the supply issues have improved in the last few weeks, General Mills says they are still below where they usually are. The FDA has released its inspection findings after a major baby formula recall. The findings show Abbott Nutrition failed to ensure the surfaces in the plant that touched the formula were maintained to prevent contamination. Now, Abbott recalled several lots of Similac, Alimentum, and Elecare baby formula made at its manufacturing plant in February. The recalled formulas have been linked to serious infections in five infants. Two of the babies died. In an internal investigation by Abbott, they concluded the bacteria likely entered the building with contractors who walked on the roof and failed to clean their shoes because these are preliminary findings. The next steps are a formal report and a warning letter to the company. Well, as soon as we went on the air this morning, our lead story was a traffic issue. That's right. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos about those issues on 35. Uh, they're just continuing to actually spread out. I uh, just want to give some context. We have about maybe 20 camera shots over to next to me and about five of those those camera shots are showing flashing lights. This is one of them at I-10 at Day Zavala. Not sure what's going on here just yet, but we got to find out. Not the only problem that we're looking at this morning. Let's go ahead and take a look around town really quick. I-10 at Callahan. You can see traffic moving through there without any trouble, but elsewhere, 410 at WW White looking a little bit busier. But as I mentioned, the roads are riddled with problems right now, and drivers make sure that you stay alert and plan ahead. Let's go ahead and take you right to the map and show you where some of the things are happening. We have this deadly crash. This is a big story right now off of I-35 northbound at Rudiman Road. Katrina Weber has been live there this morning and is working to get us more details, but we know that it is definitely causing some issues for drivers that are heading northbound on 410. TxDOT is reporting that particular area is closed and traffic is being taken off here at that exit at Space Center Drive. So again, we've been seeing that buildup in those northbound lanes of 410. Make sure again you are planning ahead. Not the only problems, as I mentioned, we do have I-10 eastbound at Roosevelt Avenue where a second crash popped up a few minutes ago. And while I was looking at that trans guide camera, Another one came in here off of 410 Southbound at West Military Drive. Wider look at the map does show we do have a pretty problematic start as we get this new morning rolling. We're going to keep an eye on things and give you guys those updates as things go on. And thank you very much, Stephen. You know, we've had a few pictures sent in of a few like one or two blue bonnets. Right. We haven't seen a whole patch of blue not, bonnets yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And here you go. Yes, indeed. Beautiful field full of blue bonnets wow. there. Yeah, that's a gorgeous picture. And I don't know what this usually looks like, you know, as far as not in blue bonnet season. But the other thing to, to take note of, and a lot of brown patches in mm -hmm. there. And that may look like your front yard and backyard as well because things are, are really dry down there around uh, Floresville and especially out to the west. Gorgeous picture. Yes, beautiful blue skies out there. But, boy, it's also evident that uh, with the brown patches we could use some rain and... Not really anything in the forecast, maybe way down the road. We've got some clear skies right now, and yep, it is cold out there. Wind chill 37, 35 is what it feels like in comfort. The wind chill is down to 30 right now in Hondo, and we don't even have that strong wind as of right now. I mean, in a lot of places, there isn't really any wind to speak of. Nine miles per hour out there at the airport, uh, nine Castroville, seven at Honda. But then these numbers are definitely going to start to pick up as the, the morning rolls on and especially later on this afternoon. So we're going to be uh, maybe losing a few degrees in the next couple of hours. Good looking sunrise this morning, 40 at seven o'clock, and then you jump up a good, you know, four or five degrees each and every every hour, so 50 at 9 o'clock, and then we'll continue that nice uh, steady rise in temperatures with this dryer that heats up very easily, so uh, 55 at 10 o'clock, 65 already by noon, and again, notice how the wind is going to be up there about uh, 15, 20 miles per hour, gusting on top of that. High today is 75, so we start off uh, roughly 15 degrees below normal, but then we get up to a normal high temperature later on today. Of course, we do have the red flag warning in effect. Can't emphasize this enough that out 
outdoor burning, just please don't even think about it because any fires that start are going to spread very, very quickly. And this covers San Antonio, New Braunfels, everybody off to the north and west and south, with the exception of just a couple of our counties off to the north and east. The humidity is going to stay very low the next couple of days. So, yes. Good news, bad news, good news, very, very comfortable. Bad news, fire danger still remains on the, the higher side, even though the wind's not going to be as breezy the next few days. Then the humidity begins its return as we go into the weekend. Still really comfortable this weekend. Really starts to come back into the picture then Monday and Tuesday. And that is going to help out with more clouds and hopefully lead to uh, some rain chances by the middle of next week. Huge, huge flow out there, uh, up there, I should say, right around the Great Lakes. And this is that north to northwesterly flow keeping us kind of cool in the mornings, keeping the very dry air in place around here. So this is the case the next few days. Then we go into the weekend and and it's not quite as pronounced as far as the uh, that flow coming in here from the north start to flatten out a little bit more. That next low is going to start to work its way on in here. This will help to pull in more moisture around. And so that, like I said, is going to help out with the clouds. And as that thing moves pretty much just to the north of us, have right on top, it would be giving us a better chance for some rain, but we're going to be sort of on the tail end. But this will give us that chance of rain as this continues to slide by just to the north of us by the middle part of next week. So again, at least there is the chance of rain. We'll obviously keep watching it. Hopefully it does improve as time goes on. 65 degrees today at noon, sunny, windy and high temperature today makes it up to 75. Really, really nice day. Open up the windows and then tomorrow, same situation, cold morning. Look at that. We gain 40 degrees throughout the day tomorrow from 43 up to 83, 85 on Saturday, Sunday. Uh, great weekend. Make some outdoor plans. If you're outdoor, if you're firing up the grill or anything like that, watch it. Watch, watch it. it like a hawk. Be yes. extra careful. Chance of rain by the middle of next week. I, both two nights in a row now, I've left the bedroom windows open when I went to sleep. Uh -huh. <laughs> and around uh, midnight, one o'clock, I'm like, where's that winter blanket? Yes. It's and if you're cold. going out this afternoon, going to be out this evening, make uh -huh. sure you do take a coat with you. And these two can attest to that from last night uh, as yes. you were outside recording something. Night right? before. Uh, night yes, night before. But, yes, but it was cold. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now, 554, about 43 degrees. And let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, seven, two, nine. Fireball 9, Daily 4, 5, 1, 9, 1, Fireball 5. Cash 5 numbers 10, 19, 21, 23, 24, Lotto Texas 11, 14, 15, 25, 33, 36. And we're looking at Powerball 31, 32, 37, 38, 48, Powerball 24, Power Play 2. Thursday morning coming up here on GMA. We of course have to cover that breaking news. North Korea test firing a long range missile toward the sea. The first intercontinental ballistic missile launch in more than four years. We're going to tell you what we know about that. And President Biden in Europe meeting with our allies in a series of high stakes meetings. They are looking for ways, of course, to end the war in Ukraine. We're also learning Ukrainian forces are pushing Russian troops back from the capital. We will have that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Ahead the next hour, GMSA, a popular voice back on the FM airwaves in San Antonio. How are your branded radio station is spinning Tejano music into a new era. Transcode right now, we do have several traffic trouble spots. Stephen will get you up to speed on that. And we'll also check in live with a reporter from our sister station in Houston. He has arrived in Poland where he's covering a U.S. aid group's efforts with the war next door in Ukraine. Now at six, our sister station from Houston has a crew live in Poland. They're following the crisis as it continues to unfold in Ukraine. We'll have a live report coming up in a few minutes. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It's Thursday, March 24th. Thanks for joining us today. Let's go ahead and get right to traffic. It's been a busy morning. Not, yeah, it's not slowed down. Mark, Stephanie, if you're just waking up with us, we are spotting some of that trouble out on the roadways. 35 at Space Center. This is a view from Transguide, a different shot. It doesn't really show a whole lot of activity out there, but I was just checking with the TxDOT website and I was talking to our friends over at Transguide. This portion, uh, there's still some closures out there due to a deadly crash. When we're going to speak to Katrina Weber in just a moment, let's go ahead and show you where it's pinpointed because we're seeing that crash right now listed off I-35 northbound at Riddiman Road as 
we drive down here, we're starting to also see that buildup of traffic off the northbound lanes of 410. Right now, traffic is being forced to take that exit at Space Center Drive, and that's what's causing that buildup there. So we're going to watch that closely and again talk to Katrina Weber in just a moment, but got to get to these other crashes as well. I-10 eastbound at Roosevelt. We're starting to see that buildup there as the morning does go on. Uh, nothing too bad here, though, off of 410 southbound at West Military Drive. As we get that wide look at 601 around the metro area, no other problems to report just yet. But as we inch closer to morning rush, things can quickly change. Let's go over and head over. To, let's head over to Katrina Weber live there this morning. Katrina, what's the latest? Well, good morning, Stephen. It looks like uh, we have a bit fewer of those flashing lights that we saw earlier, but this is the area where that crash happened about three o'clock this morning. From what we're told by police, uh, there was a car that came off that elevated highway off I-35, just south of Ritterman Road, landed in pieces, according to police, on the ground below. Uh, we did see a lot of activity right in that underpass earlier where uh, police and the medical examiner were working. But right now, again, it looks like some of them have left the scene since that time. Uh, we don't have any information on the person or people who were killed uh, in this crash, but we do know there was at least one death as a result of that car coming off the highway. Uh, the highway had been closed ever since, and traffic was being diverted onto this access road. Now, I'm starting to see some activity up on this elevated portion. I'm going to try to find out to see exactly if something has opened up or what is going on. But for now, we do see a lot of that traffic still on this access road, so there are some closures here. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. Beautiful start this morning. Notice she was wearing a coat because it is pretty chilly out there. We're going to have a great looking sunrise. Prior to that, though, they're off in the eastern sky, and usually, you know, the brightest object in the sky, other than in the night sky, other than the moon, is the planet Venus. But that's also that's Venus and Mars and Mercury together, and then Jupiter and Saturn are kind of down in the line right here. So all the visible planets are, are going to be uh, kind of lined up. But yeah, that's those uh, three planets kind of clustered up there together. An absolutely gorgeous sight. And temperatures, yep, it's pretty chilly out there, as I mentioned. 42 at the airport, Stinson. In. Kelly, 38 degrees. Converse right now is at 40 and over there by uh, Randolph. And then you go further out into portions of the Hill Country. Kerrville is at 37 degrees and we've got 35 Fredericksburg, which means in your backyard when you're 35 degrees, you may be right around freezing in parts of the Hill Country. Of course, red flag warnings go into effect at 11 o'clock up until 7 o'clock for just about all of the area, with the exception of a few of our eastern counties. We've got a very high fire danger with the bone dry air out there. That allows temperatures to heat up very quickly, of course, but then we've got the windy conditions, and of course, the ground is pretty well parched from virtually no rain. Everything's on the low side with the allergens, and the updated count's gonna be coming out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. 65 degrees today at noon, 75 for a high temperature. It is going to be windy. We've got those gusty winds northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Plenty of sunshine. It's going to cool off kind of quickly tonight. And another day like uh, today, cool morning, and then it's going to be even warmer in the afternoon. Plus a look at the weekend forecast coming up in a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. We are now one month into the war in Ukraine. President Joe Biden's high stakes meetings in Brussels, Belgium start today. He's preparing to announce new sanctions on Russian lawmakers. Our sister station KPRC in Houston has a crew on the ground in Eastern Europe covering the humanitarian crisis unfolding amid this war. That's right. Reporter Zach Lashway is live in Helm, Poland. That's only about 15 miles from the Ukrainian border. Zach joins us live this morning. Good morning. Mark, good morning to you. Stephanie, good morning, and good morning to you at home. Yes, we are in Helm, Poland, as you mentioned, approximately 15 miles away from that border. We are along one of two routes Ukrainians fleeing that country can take into Poland that can lead them to Western Europe. We've been on the ground for less than 24 hours. We've spent much of our time in Warsaw at a church that's been converted into a shelter talking with refugees. The Baptist Union of Poland headquarters is usually quiet on a weekday. But since late February, hundreds of refugees, many children, mix life and love into its corridors. I just feel like it's normal, although it's not normal. In the basement of the fellowship hall, a sense of normalcy, children playing with toys while others compete during a game of foosball. 
trying to pretend war is not forcing them to flee from their home. As Christians, we don't want only to help physically, but also encourage them spiritually. Reverend Dr. Matajut Wajarhe is the pastor at the Baptist Union of Poland. He, with help from dozens of volunteers from Texas Baptist Men, a Texas-based organization, has transformed their campus into a shelter for Ukrainians fleeing conflict. We couldn't believe it, it was happening. Peter and eight of his family members are trying to get to the United States. I know your plan is to go to South Carolina. Yes, that's right. Do you ever believe you will return home to Ukraine? Yeah, I believe so and I hope so. Is your hope to return to Ukraine? The same goes for Araya. Yes. I want home. Maria, a mother and grandmother, crochets to take her mind off her new reality. Maria is at the shelter with one of her grandsons. She says her other grandson was forced to stay back in Ukraine to fight in Putin's war. And Maria hopes to be reunited with her family in Boston, Massachusetts. She has a son who lives there, so that's her goal. Her goal is to see her family soon, once again, in the United States. Mark and Stephanie. Zach, what can you tell us about the difference you are seeing with the children and adults there? Yeah, so as I mentioned, we were in uh, Warsaw for much of yesterday when we arrived, and we were at a church that is now a shelter, and we saw children running around, you know, children being children. They were playing tag. They were jumping on trampolines. Adults are much more reserved. They appear to be concerned. We use a translator to communicate with them, and during that, they express a lot of heartbreak and, of course, uh, concerns for what's next. And Zach, what can you tell us about the shelters there? They are not meant to be long-term, right? That is correct. So uh, again, we're following a group from Texas, Texas Baptist Men. They're headquartered out of, out of Dallas, but they have people uh, throughout the state, uh, volunteers here on the ground, helping these churches convert to shelters. Uh, they're currently helping five. Uh, there are about 110 Baptist churches throughout Poland, and nearly half of them have converted to shelters. The other half cannot because they do not own the property. So people within those congregations are opening their doors but they are meant to be stepping stones to uh, what's next. Their goal is to get them out uh, while they can take more in. But I know a lot of these folks we're speaking to, they want to stay in eastern Poland, specifically close to that border, because their hope is to return home to Ukraine. All right, Zach Lashway reporting live in Poland with KPRC. Thank you for joining us this morning. New this morning, North Korea has fired at least one suspected ballistic missile towards the sea. That's according to military officials in South Korea. They say it's apparently extending its weapons test that may culminate with the flight of its biggest intercontinental ballistic missile yet. Right now, it's unclear whether the weapon involved was ballistic or just how far it flew. Japan's Coast Guard issued a warning for vessels passing nearby waters. This marks North Korea's 12th round of weapons launches this year. Now turning to Washington, a vote on Judge Katanji Brown Jackson's nomination to the Supreme Court is expected before the Senate's Easter break. It follows days of hearings which continued into last night. ABC's Alex Prache has highlights. This morning, Democrats are blasting some Republicans for the questions they raised during the marathon confirmation hearings for Supreme Court nominee Katanji Brown Jackson. Ignored the rules of the committee badgered the nominee. I've never seen anything like that. I've been here 48 years. Republican senators accused Jackson of being soft on sex offenders in child porn cases when she was a district judge. Despite fact checkers finding that the terms Jackson handed down were within the norms of federal guidelines. I've taken every case seriously. These are do you have Very to say about the horrible I'm asking you specifically about And Senator Lindsey Graham interrupting Jackson repeatedly on the issue. Senator, this crime is among the most difficult. No, answer most my question. Jackson also sparring with Republican Senator Stay John Cornyn on abortion. So there's no suggestion that after 20 weeks that a child can be live independently, correct? Senator, I'm, I'm not a biologist. I haven't studied this. I don't know. Then Democratic Senator Cory Booker speaking in support of Jackson, emphasizing the historic nature of her nomination. You got 
hear how every black woman in America who's gotten anywhere has done by being <laughs> like Ginger Rogers said, I did everything Fred Astaire did, but backwards in heels. I know what it's taken for you to sit in that seat. And Senator Ben Sass appearing to subtly call out his Republican colleagues. I think we should recognize that the jackassery we often see around here um, is partly because of people mugging for short term uh, camera opportunities. If Democrats stay united and it's expected that they will, they won't need a single Republican vote to confirm her. A vote on her nomination is expected early next month. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Now at 11 minutes past the hour, about 43 degrees. And still to come, backlash for the royals, why Prince William and Duchess Kate are dealing with protests on their tour of the Caribbean. Well, let's look at some of the stories trending right now on KSAT.com. That's coming up next. And a quick look outside with live cam this morning. Uh, interesting shot there, but rather pretty of downtown San Antonio. <laughs> We're at 43 degrees. We'll be right back. Our camera. New this morning on KSAT.com, local businesses say they are excited to have crowds returning to downtown San Antonio. Business owners and managers say with a spike in tourism, they're feeling the pressure of staff shortages. Despite, despite being short staffed, they say they're making do and are making sure visitors and San Antonians alike have a great experience. And right now, city officials say there are more than 6,500 applications pending for emergency housing assistance. Applications were submitted to the San Antonio Housing Authority just as the eviction moratorium was about to expire at the beginning of March. Many of their clients are looking for help to stay in their homes. CPS Energy says they are planning to set up dates for CPS Energy representatives to meet with Saha families at their properties. Both agencies say they are committed to helping families keep their homes. New York athletes and performers will now be exempt from the city's COVID vaccine mandate. That announcement expected to come later today from New York City Mayor Eric Adams. The exemption will go into effect immediately, allowing athletes like Brooklyn Nets star Kyrie Irving to play home games and allow unvaccinated baseball players to take the field when their season begins. Mayor Adams says he felt the vaccine rule was unfair when it came to athletes and performers because visiting players and performers were allowed to play and perform. For more on this story and others, head over to KSAT.com. And it's been a busy morning for traffic, but looking at the TransGuy cameras now, things seem to be moving in at least a lot of those shots, Stephen. Yeah, you know, things are moving, but they have not slowed down in terms of problems. Let's get a closer look. US 90 at Couples. You can see that we got a busier shot, or we have a busier shot. 1604 at Kitty Hawk. We're not really seeing a whole lot going on in this direction, but other areas, it has been some trouble out on the roadways, to say the least. Right here, this is a new one, 410 at Marbach. Wow, that's quite the scene out there. We'll find out what's going on in just a moment, but let's Let's go ahead and get you to the map because there is a lot to talk about here. 35 northbound at Riddiman. This is the site of a deadly crash that occurred earlier this morning. Katrina Weber has been live there and has been telling us what the conditions have looked like. Um, I was checking also with TxDOT. It does appear that we are seeing this closure here that had been there off of 410 northbound opened up. Now traffic still slowed down there at the exit at Space Center, but again, we'll get that confirmed in just a moment so that way you can plan ahead. Drive down here does show some progress though. I-10 eastbound at Roosevelt. This crash is actually cleared out, so we'll get that removed from the map and we've also seen this crash is a new one on 410 northbound right there at US 90. So that's the latest one that may be where we saw those flashing lights 410 southbound at West Military. This crash is also cleared, so it's a lot to keep up with. But as we get the bird's eye view of the map 618, no other problems to report so we can take a breath uh, for a little while, but make sure you are driving safe. We're going to have more updates coming up here on GMSA. Whew. OK, thank you, Stephen. Yeah, that is a lot. Coffee helps. Can't forget to give a big <laughs> shout out to all the folks that are in town for the uh, Sweet 16 oh. and then Grade 8 tournament. Yep. Welcome to San Antonio. Yeah. From I, I don't know all the schools because my brackets busted. I, 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 <laughs> so he gave up. Of, I have seen a lot of folks uh, down at Market Square seeing uh, wearing U of M colors. So fantastic. Well, welcome. We hope you guys yeah. have a great visit. Yes, uh, and they get great weather. Oh, they sure do. Mm. Yeah, it, it couldn't be nicer. This is this is perfect. And you're going to have low humidity uh, around here as well. So yeah, welcome. Enjoy it. And this morning, hopefully you brought, you know, all sorts of clothes like shorts in the afternoon and then jackets. This is what we are used to around here this time of year. Uh, we're going to be right around 40 degrees in the next couple of 
of hours and then up to 75. So we gain 35 degrees throughout the course of the day. It is going to be on the breezy side with those winds out of the northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Kind of uh, gusty. Yesterday, of course, we had some of those mid high clouds hanging around here. And of course, Mr. McClellan over there at Woodlawn Lake caught a beautiful, beautiful picture. Yes, a very dramatic looking sunset this evening. Thank you so much for that picture. And the sunrise is going to be very dramatic as well. Is that the glow already or am I kind of pushing things a little bit? Maybe pushing things. By the way, the uh, when we were, I was talking off the, the top of this half hour and the uh, the three planets together, I misspoke is Venus, Mars and Saturn that were uh, together right there. And then Jupiter and uh, Mercury are just which planet called to tell you you're wrong? <laughs> which which planet called? Pluto. Pluto. Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, and all of uh, the visible planets are, are kind of lined up there together. Obviously, we can't see some below the horizon right now. Wind chill temperature right now, 37 degrees. 34 is what it feels like in comfort, and Hondo still at 31. So yeah, it's pretty darn cold out there. We don't have much of a breeze right now, and the wind obviously is going to be picking up later on today. So again, temperatures will drop down another degree or so right around because in a situation like this, we got mostly clear skies, one or two clouds out there, very dry air, light wind. You get the coldest temperatures just below, just before, pardon me, sunrise. And then so that's why in the uh, seven o'clock hour, we should have our coolest temperatures and then warm up pretty quickly. 50 at nine o'clock. We get up in the uh, 60s by 11 noon, 65 degrees. Of course, wind is going to start to pick up and then we'll top off at 75 later on today. Plenty of sunshine. I mean, just an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous day. But of course, on the downside, we do have that red flag warning for the high fire danger throughout most of the area because of the again, haven't had rain in forever. It seems like all right in the next couple of days, like today, we were talking about a 35 degree swing in temperatures, about 40 degrees tomorrow. Really cold start in the morning, then get up into the 80s. And then notice how the low temperatures especially start to come up. So we won't have that big swing in temperatures. So that's the humidity that starts to return. And that's going to hopefully feed a couple of showers by probably not until the middle part of next week. Around the country, there's that huge storm system still up there in the Great Lakes, churning around there up into Canada. That's the same same one that brought us the severe storms a couple of days ago and is now pulling in very, very nice weather. So that's going to be getting on out of here upstream. We really don't have anything in the offing except plenty of sunshine and yes, gorgeous weather, but of course the high fire danger. 65 degrees today at noon, sunny, windy, then a high temperature makes it all the way up to 75 degrees. Yeah, just a glorious day. Roll down the windows, but make sure you close them by later on this evening. Who was it? You, Steph, that left the windows open? Mark. Oh, that was me. Mark. Oh, Mark. Yeah. Well, yeah. Shouldn't know. Now, uh, and keep 80, in mind, I only grabbed a blanket. I left the windows open. 83 ah. degrees tomorrow, 85 high temperature over the weekend. Humidity begins its return, and then at least we have some rain chances by the middle of next week. Yeah, I'm one of those guys that likes to sleep cold. Ooh, not me. Yeah, you're always cold. Right. I mean, it could be August, and you'd be like, I'd still have a blanket. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thanks. 622, about 44 degrees. And a great night for our San Antonio Spurs. Just ahead, highlights from their big win in Portland. My A1C stayed here. It needed to be here. Ruby's A1C is down with Rebelsis. My A1C wasn't at goal. Now I'm down with Rebelsis. Mom's A1C is down with Rebelsis. In a clinical study, once daily Rebelsis significantly lowered A1C better than a leading branded pill. Rebelsis isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't take Rebelsis if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Rebelsis and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Rebelsis with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration, which may and kidney problems. Need to get your A1C down? A1C down Ask down your healthcare provider about Rebelsis today.
In this morning's GMA First Look, Royal Reckoning, Prince William speaking out, acknowledging the monarch's historic role in colonialism, racism, and the slave trade, saying, I want to express my profound sorrow. Slavery was abhorrent, and it should never have happened. Facing backlash and protests, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are on a royal tour of the Caribbean, but are now being pushed to answer for the sins of the old British Empire. During a welcome for the two Wednesday morning, Jamaica's Prime Minister had this message to the palace. We are moving on. Presenting the couple an official gift of aged rum, all smiles during the meet and greet, but the Prime Minister not shying away from saying it's Jamaica's destiny to become an independent country. There are issues here which are, as you would know, unresolved. So what does this mean for the rest of the Royal Caribbean tour? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. Now to a huge win for our San Antonio Spurs. They were able to crush the Trailblazers last night in Portland. DeJounte Murray coming away with 28 points. Keldon Johnson added 26. Final score, Spurs win 133 to 96. The Spurs are still in the mix for that play-in game in the Western Conference with three wins in their last five games. And last night's win comes without Lonnie Walker. He was out for a second straight game because of back spasms. Great win. Go Spurs, go. Mm -hmm. Time now, 627 and 43 degrees for now. President Joe Biden in Brussels, Belgium, to meet with NATO allies to enact new sanctions on Russia and crack down on other countries helping Russia. We have details in our next half hour. And a quick look at the roads with Transguide. There are the problems there at Loop 410 and Marbuck Road. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. problems on the city's northeast side as police investigate a deadly crash. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. You may want to avoid the area near I-35, 410 and Riddiman Road. I'll tell you more about it. President Biden's high stakes trip to Brussels now underway. I'm Alex Boucher in Washington. I'll have a preview coming up. Another very chilly start to our day as we go outside with live cam over there near the airport. 43 degrees right now. Hi, good morning. Thank you for joining us. It's a little cold out there. We'll get to uh, weather in just a minute, but we're having a lot of problems with uh, traffic, especially there at Loop 410 and Marbuck Road. Since we went on the air this morning at 430, here's another update with Stephen. Thank you, Mark. Stephanie, Loop 410 and Marbach. We're going to start here. This is another problem spot that we are watching closely. We are seeing first responders that have been out there for a little while now. This is a crash that popped up probably a few minutes ago, and you can see with traffic moving in the background, we could probably expect some slowdowns in the next few minutes. Minutes. Let's take you to the map because we are seeing that pinpointed in the northbound lanes of 410 right there at US 90. Again, no slowdowns just yet, but we can likely expect to see some congestion as the morning does roll on. But we are seeing a little bit of progress as we drive over here to the northeast side where we have this crash off of I-35 northbound at Riddiman. Talking to our friends at Transguide a few moments ago and with Katrina Weber, it does look like those northbound lanes at 410 have reopened, which had been closed for quite a while due to this deadly crash. First responders have been out there for for quite a while and that's where we find Katrina Weber live there now. Katrina, what's the latest? Well, good morning, Stephen. Yeah, just like you said, uh, we are seeing fewer lights out here. Uh, this the, the only area that we see right now is right under this uh, in this overpass here. That is where police and um, and other first responders still have this area roped up. This is as you come off 35 and you're attempting to go to Riddiman Road. That area is still closed right now, but most of the other areas that we saw that were closed earlier have reopened. And this, of course, is due to a crash that happened about 3 o'clock this morning. Police tell us that a car flew off the elevated highway and landed on the ground below in pieces. Uh, the medical examiner was here. They did confirm that at least one person died in that crash this morning. And so this has been the situation ever since as police investigated uh, the crash to try to figure out exactly what went wrong. They say the curious thing is that the car came off the highway and seemed to miss all of the guardrails because there was no damage to any of those. So it flew right over the guardrails and then landed on the ground below. And again, one person at least killed in that crash. It looks like they are just about wrapping up the investigation. So we expect that this area may reopen soon. But for now, that's the only thing still closed, the underpass here as you come from 35 North to Riddiman Road. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
Thank you very much, Katrina. All right, beautiful start this morning. We've got a lot of clear skies out there as of right now, and it is definitely cold. Temperatures are, well, we're at 42 at the airport. Really dry air. Dew point is down to 23, which means extremely low humidity. Slight breeze, so we do have somewhat of a wind chill. Of course, very dry air. Wind is going to be picking up later on today, and that's prompting red flag warning for again, most of the area, with the exception just of our uh, some of our eastern counties. So any outdoor burning, just Please don't even do it because we've had some of those wildfires that have popped up over the past couple of days and they, they spread extremely quickly and that's the situation today. And even though there's nothing formally posted for tomorrow, fire danger is still going to remain on the higher side tomorrow because the dry air remains in place. All of the allergens out there on the low side, including oak, we're not really into the... Uh, the throws of the oak season as of yet. A couple of clouds, otherwise mostly clear skies. It is chilly or just downright cold out there this morning. And then sunny, windy, mid 70s later on today. So we're well below our normal low temperature, which is mid 50s right now, but we get up to a normal high and we're going to be gaining about 35 degrees throughout the course of the day. Sunny, mid 80s tomorrow after a very cold start again. So it's low to mid 40s, up to low to mid 80s. Then over the weekend, good looking weekend, uh, make some outdoor plans. It is is going to be warmer still in the mid 80s. Humidity will start to return. So going to be comfortable all weekend long, but later Sunday you'll start to notice some more of that humidity coming on in here and hopefully that leads to and helps out with some rain chances by the middle part of next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, some people in East Bear County arrived home late last night to find their vehicle and their trailer home had burned down. It happened around 10 last night at the Windmill Heights RV Park on FM 3465 in Adkins. Fire crews say when they got there, both the vehicle and trailer were on fire. They say both are considered a total loss. No injuries were reported. Now, the owner says they were visiting San Antonio at the time of that fire. The leadership struggle between the South San ISD Board of Trustees continues during the first meeting since December. Last night, all trustees were present for the first time in months. After heated discussion, the board majority voted to reassess the board roles of president, vice president, and secretary after only three months. The district superintendent is still on administrative leave. In the meantime, an interim super is trying to keep the district staff moving forward with day-to-day -day operations. You can read more about the district's troubled past on ksat.com. And plans to help the East Side community grow and develop economically are moving forward. Last night, more than 100 residents and businesses got a chance to see the draft for the SA Tomorrow East Side Community Area Plan. Now, it's part of a larger comprehensive plan that covers the entire city that's been in the works for several years. Some of the improvements include crosswalks, trees, public art, and bike lanes. Residents can provide staff feedback on the plans until April 17th. City staff will then move forward to finalize the plan plans to present to council for a vote by the end of the year. We know that you can't have change right away, and so it's really working with our partners um, to help us uh, implement the plan over time. The next phase after council approves the plan will be to find the funding in the budget. We are now one month into the war in Ukraine and President Joe Biden's high stakes meeting in Brussels starts today. He's preparing to announce new sanctions on Russian lawmakers. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest. President Biden's high stake trip to Brussels now underway, starting today at NATO headquarters for an emergency summit before meeting with the G7. The president and world leaders are expected to announce a new package of crippling economic sanctions on Russia and will also crack down on any other countries helping them get around sanctions. It comes as Russia's invasion of Ukraine crosses the one month mark. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky saying this isn't just about his country. This is only the beginning. Russia is trying to defeat the freedom of all people in Europe, of all the people in the world. It tries to show that only crude and cruel force matters. A new drone video released by a right-wing paramilitary group incorporated into the Ukrainian National Guard shows the devastation in the port city of Mariupol. The U.S. now saying this. The U.S. government assesses that Russia's forces are committing war crimes in Ukraine. But the Ukrainians are fighting fiercely. The Pentagon says they've pushed Russian forces back 34 miles outside the capital city. A U.S. official telling ABC that eastern Ukraine is littered with the charred remains of Russian tanks. NATO estimates up to 15,000 Russian soldiers have been killed in the war so far. The fear now that Russian President Vladimir Putin may grow desperate and resort to using chemical weapons. 
This morning, ABC News confirming the White House has quietly assembled a so-called Tiger Team, a group of national security officers tasked with drawing up plans for how the U.S. should respond if Vladimir Putin orders a chemical or biological attack. One other topic of concern, supplies. They have been critical to the Ukrainian fight, and a U.S. official telling ABC News that once those convoys reach Ukraine, those supplies are dispersed so quickly that they're hard to hit, and that Russia might seek to strike supply targets in Poland before they make it to Ukraine. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. In China today, the search area being expanded for a second black box from that China Eastern airliner that crashed with 132 people on board earlier this week. One of the black boxes, the cockpit voice recorder, was found yesterday. The plane was cruising at about 30,000 feet when it suddenly nosedived into a remote mountainous areas. No survivors were found. Investigators have said it's too early to speculate on the cause of the crash. And police in Glendale, Arizona, say at least three people, including a child, are recovering after a shooting at an outlet mall. Shoppers reported shots fired around 2.45 Wednesday afternoon at the Tanger Outlets. Now, Glendale police ordered a lockdown of businesses at the outlet mall so they could search. Investigators say this was an isolated incident. Back here closer to home, we're learning more about the tornado that left significant damage throughout Guadalupe County on Monday. The Weather Service has now confirmed it was an EF2 tornado. Estimated peak winds at about 115 miles per hour. That tornado traveled more than seven, seven, seven miles, passing through Kingsbury and Luling outside of Seguin. Several trees were snapped and even uprooted. And according to Guadalupe County officials, at least 24 properties were damaged. No injuries reported. A local state of disaster has been issued for the area for the next six days. Right now it is 640, about 43 degrees. And after the break, how a rebranded radio station is spinning you, Tejano Music, here in the Alamo City. Welcome back at 644. A popular voice is back on the FM airways in San Antonio. RJ Marquez tells us about Johnny Ramirez's new morning gig and how a rebranded radio station is spinning Tejano into a new era. Tejano Music is back on the FM dial across the city of San Antonio. We visited with the one and only Johnny Ramirez to tell us more about Tejano 95.7 and find out about the future of this music genre. Thank you so much for checking out the Hano 95.7. Johnny Ramirez is back in the booth for the rebranded 95.7 FM. Thank you so much for allowing us to come into your homes, your car. The station recently switched from La Ley to an all-dedicated Tejano station, giving the sound of San Antonio a citywide signal. It's important that, you know, especially San Antonio has a, uh, a city that you can hear if you're on the north, south, east, west side, everywhere. The Hano 95.7 just launched in March, bringing back the longtime the San Antonio world. DJ for its morning drive. Ramita says he's ready to spin the classics and also introduce listeners to a new generation of the Hano music. There's so many young artists that are hungry to bring Tejano back to the airwaves. Ramirez says it's all about connecting to the community that makes us the Tejano capital of the world. It's who we are. It's part of our culture, part of our tradition, part of our heritage. And with this switch, Ramirez hopes Tejano music continues its recent rebirth. You never know what, what you're missing until it's gone, and then all of a sudden you're going, what happened? Uh, well, what happened is, you know, Tejano is back on the FM dial, so, and hopefully it's here to stay. And RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's quarter to seven. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos about the problems on Loop 410 and Marbach Road. It doesn't look like uh, there has been much progress here at 410 and Marbach. These things do take time. What we're looking at is a crash scene uh, provided to us by our friends over at Transguide, and we can see that traffic is moving in the southbound lanes without problems, but it does look like it's appearing that, to move very slow. But we're, what we're seeing in the northbound lanes are those incidents, those flashing lights, where we did find that crash was picked up. Again, 410 northbound at US 90 is that problem spot. Not seen so much of a buildup in those those northbound lanes, but this is an area that we're going to watch closely as morning does roll on. We're in we're in that morning rush hour, so we know more people will be out on the roadways. Keep in mind, we still have this crash reported off the text website. That deadly crash. It's been the big story throughout the entire morning off I-35 northbound again at Ritterman Road. Katrina Weber has been live there, and when we last saw her and talked to her, it did look like some of the conditions were improving, but cleanup again does take time. So we'll get more information as the morning does go on. Wide look at the map doesn't show problems elsewhere. What we see some congestion. 
congestion off of the northwest side near 1604. So just be prepared, I should say, for some slowdowns. Uh, haven't had a time to check those inbound times, and if you are traveling into San Antonio, no major delays just yet from any of our neighboring communities. But keep in mind, 29 minutes in those southbound lanes coming in from 281 to downtown SA. One last look at 410 at Marbach. Guys, it's been a busy morning, but we're going to continue to watch these roads closely. Thank you, Steve. Good to have our family back together. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. Since it's last been a week while. at some point. It's been a while. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good to see everybody. Did you miss us? Of yes. course. Okay. Did you miss <laughs> us? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would Mike say? I'm just kidding. Of course, of course. Yeah, we were talking about. I was talking about the, all the folks in for the uh, Sweet 16 and uh, Michigan, Villanova. They're going right. to play each other, and then Arizona as well as Houston. So That's right. You figured out. Folks. And this is one of our great spring traditions around yes. here. If you are out and about um, when the games aren't going on, seeing all the blue bonnets that pop up. This is over there at our Lady of the Lake Convent Garden. Absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, just a. Take a picture of them like we always do. It is beautiful. And the, couldn't ask for nicer weather as well for folks uh, visiting. It's cold. Hopefully you packed everything, though. Uh, cold here in the morning. And we're just starting to see the glow of the sunrise right now. We've got a lot of clear skies, one or two clouds out there. Temperatures, we've got some 30s in the hill country and right around low 40s. We're going to be dipping down just about 40 starting off this morning. And then as that sun comes up with this dry air, heats up very easily. It doesn't take a whole lot of energy to heat up the dry air. So we're going to make it all the way up to 50 today at 9 o'clock, 60 then by 11 and noontime, 65 degrees. Then later on this afternoon, we continue that good warming and quick warm up 75 for a high temperature. So we're about 15 degrees below normal starting off this morning and then we top off at a normal high temperature, but it is going to be breezy today and with that dry air. Yes, comfortable. However, that of course those two ingredients and the fact we haven't had any rain, especially out in the hill country seems like forever. So that's prompting that red flag warning. Can't emphasize enough outdoor burning. Just forget about it because things are going to spread very quickly if any fires do get going and we'll still have somewhat of a higher fire danger tomorrow as well, even on Saturday, because the humidity is still going to be very dry. Then it's going to start to come back upstairs in the atmosphere. Not much as far as moisture, so that means we're going to have some just gorgeous blue skies out there and humidity, like I said, remains very low throughout the rest of today with these winds coming in here out of the northwest primarily and same thing tomorrow. Very, very low dew point temperatures, therefore very low relative humidity. But by Friday night into Saturday, we start to get more of a flow coming in here off the Gulf of Mexico. It's not going to be humid. It's not going to be muggy or anything like that, but at least we start to get some of this moisture coming back in here. So that's going to help to alleviate that higher fire danger. Big, big storm system, which this thing has been stretching all the way from southern Canada through the Great Lakes. Big snowstorm up there, and that's what brought us the severe weather a couple of uh, days ago. And now on the backside of it, it's pulling in the beautiful weather, and this will be the case for the next couple of days. And then, like I said, we start to see more humidity coming in here by the weekend as we get more than a southwesterly flow ahead of that next low. And hopefully that's the one that's going to give us some rain around here by maybe Tuesday, Wednesday. It doesn't look like great rain chances as of yet, but at least there is that chance. 65 degrees at noon today. Sunny, beautiful. Open up the windows, but it is going to be breezy. 75 for a high temperature and again, still windy conditions. If you are heading out this evening, from later on this afternoon because you won't need a jacket this afternoon, but make sure you take one with you because it will cool off quickly. We're going to be down in the low 40s again tomorrow, but then all the way up to 83 degrees, mid 80s over the weekend one or two extra clouds around here and then humidity starts to return more humid and hopefully some rain in the middle of next week. You're back to mid 80s by the weekend staff. Yeah, not too bad. We'll take it. Nice weekend. Good looking weekend. Thank you, Mike. 650 about 43 degrees. And do you have the right personality for your job tomorrow on GMSA? What employers are looking for outside with live cam will wrap up GMSA after this break. There's just a hint of your Thursday morning sunrise. Thursday morning coming up here on GMA. We of course have to cover that breaking news. North Korea test firing a long range missile toward the sea. The first intercontinental ballistic missile launch in more than four years. We're going to tell you what we know about that and President Biden in Europe meeting with our allies in a series of high stakes meetings. They are looking for ways of course to end the war in Ukraine. We're also learning Ukrainian forces are pushing Russian troops back from the capital. We will have that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. 
about five minutes till seven on your Thursday morning. Let's take a look at traffic again with Stephen Cavazos. No change here. Mark and Stephanie L 410 at Marbach. This is where we have that crash reported earlier this morning. It does look like first responders are working to clear things up, but it has been a little while at this point where we've seen them out there. So you got to drive carefully in this direction. Keep in mind as we're keeping our eyes on this particular area of town, we do have that crash here on 410 northbound at US 90. Sometimes our map will pinpoint a crash in a direction that's close to that vicinity where you saw trans guide camera. So we're going to watch this spot closely, but drive carefully. I, I do have some good news to report here as we drive over here to 35 northbound at Ritterman. That crash at Katrina Weber has been live at has finally cleared. So that's some good news. Not seeing slowdowns in that direction anymore. And as we get that wide look at the map, no other problems to report. Inbound times are looking OK as well, Mike. Thank you, sir. Gorgeous start this morning. We are starting to see the glow of the sunrise and grab a coat, grab your sunglasses before you head out the door. We are now up to 45 degrees, 35 at Comfort, 38 at Port SA. We did uh, bottom out about mm, anywhere from 10 to 15 below normal. Red flag warnings going to affect later on this morning up until 7 o'clock in pretty much all of the area except our extreme eastern counties, northeastern counties and Dry air, windy conditions, 75 for a high temperature today. Gusty winds out of the northwest, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Uh, still a relatively high fire danger tomorrow. Huge warm up throughout the day. We start getting into the 80s, mid 80s by the weekend. Good looking last weekend of March, if you can believe wow. it already. And then some rain chances in the middle of next week. All right. Thanks for starting your day with us, folks. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Have an awesome day, and we'll see you back here at 9.